I hope you enjoyed your day. Uh, we now are going to present you somebody who, who has built one of the early unicorns in India. You will be extremely pleased to meet Mr. Naveen Tiwari, the founder of uh, Inmobile. He has uh, very kindly consented to speak about his journey and to give certain guidance to our SME community today. So I'd like to uh, speak about Naveen a little bit. He has a degree from IIT Kanpur and a master's degree in business administration from Harvard. He is involved in fueling about 30 startups in India, like Nestaway, Slide Rule, Metal, Money Sites, Razor Pay. He also co-founded iSpirit. Incidentally, I was with him during that time, which is an IT think tank. He is the founder and chair of US-based nonprofit uh, called School Fund, which funds the setup, setting up of schools in rural India. Naveen is a recipient of many awards, notably the Future Leaders Award presented by the Prime Minister, Honorable Narendra Modi ji, and Fortune 40's Under 40, Most Powerful Influential People in Business 2015. Naveen, a very warm welcome to you in NIC 2020. Thank you for sparing your time to share your story with us. Thank you, Anand. Thank you so much as, for inviting me. Yeah, so as we spoke, our audience is mostly mid-market tech companies who have all dreams to scale up. And I want to give you some statistics today that we have about 1,200 plus attendees at this time. Three or 300 of them are IT consumer CIOs and almost uh, 900 are IT uh, SME companies. And of course, we have a lot of uh, uh, foreign country partners who after their uh, presentations have also agreed to stay back. So you have a fantastic audience today and an audience which is uh, very keen to hear uh, how well and how, uh, how tough it was for you to build Inmobile. What's your experience today uh, and what would be your advice to us? So uh, uh, very uh, welcome once again to NISC. Uh, it's a solo e uh, presentation by you. Uh, I'm also requesting all the audience that please use the Q&A chat to immediately start putting in your questions. We will be asking questions, some questions uh, for, to Naveen given time availability at the end of his session. So over to Naveen. Thank you very much once again, Naveen. Please start. Thank you so much, Anman. Uh, it's always a privilege to come and speak at uh, any NASCOM event and, it, and it's, you know, thank you for inviting me for this one. Uh, of course, you know, we are all doing these things in a very different time. So uh, I'm pretty sure we'll have some glitches here and there, but apologies for that to begin with. Uh, the topic given, which was how to build a unicorn, is a, is a very interesting one. Um, I, you know, I, I was thinking about that topic and I was like, okay, if there is a formula to it, then you know, I might just keep on flying again and again. But I guess there is no formula to it. I think, you know, what I'll try and do today is to share some of my learnings from uh, from my journey uh, of uh, of building the Mobi group now uh, and talk about that. So maybe what I'll do is spend the first few minutes just giving you a background on, you know, the Immobile Group, how it's evolved, so that it gives you more context to how we think about, uh, you know, building, you know, large play company. And I think that's, that's largely the topic of this, uh, of this discussion. So I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and share my, share some slides, uh, just to make the conversation easier to, easier to see. Um, let me know if, if the, if the slides are, are visible. Um, if we are, I'll just, I'll just move forward. Uh, let me just talk about the, you know, you know, give you an, an overview of, of Inmobi first. Now, Inmobi was founded about 12 years ago, actually 13 years ago. Uh, and, and we, we were founded at the time when the mobile revolution was just actually taking off, especially in, uh, actually taking off across in the world. And the mobile revolution, I, what I mean is more in the mobile internet revolution. And so at that point of time, we set up our businesses, uh, we set up our business, but in an environment where I would say the, you know, the, the financial capital markets was very, very weak in terms of, you know, for startups, 
Um, it's it was nothing like today. The 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 resources the resource market was also relatively weaker because people weren't necessarily looking to work for startups at that point of time. If uh, you know, uh, one of the re biggest reasons we were given for somebody not to work for us, and this is like ten years ago, uh, was uh, you know they wouldn't get they wouldn't be able to get married because you know they didn't have something big on their resumes. Uh, of course, the world's changed drastically since then, and and you know we feel very proud of that change ourselves because we have been part of that journey. But in, but oh, to give you a broad sense, we we now as part of the group, we actually have two you know two companies you know that 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 are part of the that are part of the uh, part of the company now. You know, first is the is the platform business. So we have two businesses. One is B two B business, and other is a B two C business. And we are very unique in that way. Most companies either are just in the platform side or on the consumer side, and we happen to be on both sides of that both sides of the business. So on the on the platform side of the business is what we started off with, which is uh, the core in Mobi business, which is the marketing. You know, it's the marketing advertising platform that that we built, um, and you know, it's that business is you know is about you know twelve years, thirteen years old, phenomenal scale. It's it's spread across the globe. Uh, we have close to about fifteen hundred people um, in the company. Uh, very profitable business for us. Uh, a large portion of the business comes from. This is a classical example, by the way, of building an enterprise business. But an enterprise business, which has the market for which is uh, is you know developed markets, and the 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 talent for this is the India talent, right? So that's how we think of uh, the the, the movie business, and that's where it has really helped us you know get to this part of the business is is of course scaled as very large as I said in the U.S. Uh, and in China, and and so uh, you know. The, the global expansion was one of the big things that we tried to do in this business. We stayed very true to building a great product and engineering, you know, in this business. We stayed true to, you know, innovating in this business very rapidly. And if some of you who are part of the, in, you know, who understand these industries a little better, you would realize, you know, from 2015 or 2014, 15 to 2019, 2020 till about a year ago, this industry was not necessarily you know, the most exciting industry. Um, and it and it was because a large portion of the investor community didn't believe that, you know, com large companies can be created there. And we fundamentally, you know, disagreed with that, kind of hunkered down in that phase and really built the company to a very different level right now where, you know, I would argue, you know, we are one of the largest uh, companies, largest advertising platforms on the world in the world now um, and very profitable. And so therefore, you know, as I talk about this whole journey of building a unicorn, you know, it, it's not just about getting to the unicorn status. It'll be about staying there. It'll be about growing from there, and the and the skill sets needed to actually grow from becoming one to actually, you know, growing much larger from there are very different. So that's on the on the platform side of our business. On the consumer side of our business, we have, uh, you know, we have two platforms. Uh, both of those are India originated. Uh, I fundamentally believe that consumer innovation in the world will actually take place from, you know, markets like India, uh, China. China has shown us some great platforms, whether you take WeChat or ByteDance and, you know, um, Alipay uh, and Alibaba and a bunch of these platforms that have come out of uh, China. We are very, very innovative when it comes to consumer. We, I also believe that India has an opportunity to create some very innovative consumer, pure digital consumer platforms, not offline to online. But pure digital consumer platforms, and and both Glance and Raposo are examples of that. Both are coming out, especially Glance is coming out of India and is going to go global. Uh, it is now one of the top ten content platforms in the world, uh, scaled pretty rapidly. Glance, just for those who don't know, because it's you know it's taken off in the last eighteen to twenty four months. You know, is a is a it, it reimagines your lock screen. It changes the way the lock screen needs to function. It converts your, it converts any surface, and in this case, the, the surface is the lock screen. It converts the surface into an intelligent live surface because our belief has been that, you know, we all carry this little device in our hand, and that little device has a surface which is the least utilized. Like the best we would do of that of the lock screen would be just to look at time. 
look at few other things on there and and there is an opportunity to convert that into an intelligent surface and 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 we have done that uh, we have close to about 300 million you know phones that are now that now carry uh, glance of which about 115 odd million phones use glance every day so it's about 115 million daus and spend about more than 25 minutes on it and in at that scale you know uh, glance is now actually one of the top 10 consumer platforms in the world in the last 12 months we have we have rapidly scaled ourselves in 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 that and as you can see you know we are very rapidly making uh, we are very rapidly making progress and scaling ourselves across uh, you know some of these best known names in the world uh, and we have entered the top 10 the other very interesting thing that happened uh, you know on 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 how this 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 scale up took place was we are now you know alongside bytedance and wechat we are the fastest to reach 100 million daily active users we reached 100 million daily active users in less than 24 months uh both wechat and 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 bytedance reached that in somewhere around 20 to 21 months so it's what it talks about is uh the next generation innovation that's happening in in developing economies in asian economies uh and they 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 become very very fast they grow very fast because the the depth of internet in these markets is very very solid and if you build something which is really innovative and that works then it scales up also very very quickly and of course in this chart you would see you know companies who were the first entrants into the you know into the internet space they were they were mostly in the desktop era the internet population was less so it took them time to essentially get to 100 million daily active user base and then you had the mobile first players come out but mostly out of the united states and given the population of that market doesn't allow you to essentially get to a very large scale very quickly they had to resort to a global expansion and therefore it took them time and as you see the third wave of innovation which is where you know local innovations are very rapidly scaling uh, the likes of bytedance and wechat are great examples and 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 glance is right up there so we are amongst the fastest growing digital platforms right now we feel very excited about that so i thought i'll just share the a very high level journey about a uh, uh, high level viewpoint on on where in mobi is in mobi group is right now um, as i said it's across a platform business and across consumer businesses so uh, we feel pretty we we seem to actually understand the you know both sides of the world quite quite well so now coming to the uh, coming to the the key question of this session which is you know building a unicorn uh, and and as i said in the beginning i don't know if there is like a if there is if there is a formula to it because if there were one then you know people could really replicate it but nonetheless there are certain learnings that you know that come along the way uh and 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 the, you know some of them may just seem overly simplistic but you know what my belief is i think these simplistic things are the ones that really matter in the long term not necessarily too complex set of things but before i even go there i actually think this whole concept of unicorn is a lot of media it's a very early milestone frankly if you would ask me it's, of course it's it's a good milestone to get to uh it's not the goal and and i think people get too enamored by this by the status we were the first one to get it and you know we we really didn't know what it meant so we looked it up on you know online to figure out what unicorn even meant you know back in 2012 uh but you know the the challenge with this is one has to really like grasp and understand that this is not a this is not the the end goal uh and this is just like a very early milestone in the journey now we should also be humble enough to understand that while media makes a huge uh you know rewards it in a big way and, and accolades it in a, in a big way which i think it should because it helps motivate startups to get there nobody outside in the real world really cares about you being a unicorn because you're in reality you are still far from making any real dent in any business like it's just you're just too far away and so i think we should put that in perspective as we think about um uh, the the you know getting to this unicorn status because it may 
it may change the way we approach getting there it may just be it's it's a thing that just came in and went away and you just you just continue from there and that's um, you know we are certainly trying to do that and we think you know people should absolutely understand it that way but if i were to go more deeper into this like what would it take therefore to build a big you know to build a substantially large company which can get to these you know a billion dollar you know valuations etc i think the i think the most important thing is uh, is to think big uh, which means like go after a very large opportunity and i say this with you know in in my own simplistic terms the way I, at least i have understood this is no matter what you go after if you go after a small idea or if you go after a large idea the pain and the effort is very very similar it doesn't really change your chances of failure by the way if you go after something very big or you go after something not that big are not drastically that different and so why if you're anyway going to go through this all of this pain why set yourself small goals you are actually better off going after something which is bigger something which is more meaningful something which which can really change and i think a lot of times uh, you know we we don't end up trying to do this and and that in my view uh, is a mistake uh, now as i kind of unravel this whole whole playbook in my own head i think in 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 the india context there are two kinds of companies that are getting created today there is there are b2b platform companies that are getting created and and from an from an entrepreneurial opportunity point of view the b2b uh, b2b opportunity is effectively an opportunity of a call it a us market or a developed market being captured by an indian entrepreneur right it's not the it does it does not b2b does not in most cases by the way enterprise software etc does not necessarily justify the indian market to be large now of course there are examples contrary to that but you know, there are far and few in between and so therefore in the b2b examples in the enterprise software examples you know one has to really think about you know setting a uh, in that case by the way you have to be able to go after a very deep problem a very deep problem it has to be a niche problem but a very deep problem and that is should be the only problem that you are solving and and it is important because once you go after that opportunity then you can actually you know look at look at the world very differently but then the the more popular ones are of course the b2c ones by definition because every one of us get to know them uh and the b2c examples of the opportunities are a little different i think india is a is 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 a is not a very strong market when it comes to b2c because monetization for most of the b2c companies in india is yet to be truly proven right and therefore as an entrepreneur if you are actually building out a company in india you might as well think about going not just you know you do the innovation in india and actually try and take that outside of india uh you know especially in the asian markets into the middle eastern markets into the eastern european markets and therefore your b2c opportunity with something that you can really kind of you know crack in an indian market because of the indian consumer base is so large you can actually take them outside of this out, outside of this market and therefore your b2c opportunity might actually become bigger the reason i say this is it is equally important for you to go after something big if you want to make something you know large enough happen and therefore thinking big and going after the large opportunity is actually a very important aspect in you know in making that happen the second one is uh it's actually very simple um uh, is you have to build a great product like that's it like we are technologists at the end of the day and unless and until what we build is just phenomenally great be it enterprise business uh, an enterprise product or a consumer product it has to be a great product um uh, and we should be very clear that if you want to build a meaningful large company the success is not when you use financial capital to push your product don't get me wrong you need the financial capital to promote your product but if that's your reason of why your product is becoming big in the early especially in the early to mid phases then something is wrong 
And therefore, I actually say this, uh, discount, discounting is not equal to strategy. Uh, and again, either on the enterprise side or on the, uh, or on the consumer side, it's not a strategy. Uh, it's a great growth hack. But I think, you know, over the last many years, it's actually gotten misconstrued as a, uh, as a growth lever. Um, and I'll talk about that later, but it's a, it's a big one to be aware of. That if your product is not good, if the core product metrics are not good, don't spend money behind that. Just spend money behind fixing the product and keep fixing it till it gets right. Keep fixing it till, you know, till the retention rates are good. Keep fixing it till the engagement levels are good. Keep fixing it till your NPS scores are very, very good. You've got to just get the product right. Because once you get your product right, then you can really scale much faster from there. And, and I, I will relate, you know, long time back for about two years, you know, we scaled before our product was really ready for the market scaling. And it was horrendous because, you know, you had an unhappy customer, you had an unhappy sales team, and you had an overworked engineering and product team. And I realized at that point of time that, you know, taking these products too quickly to the market till you have a good hold on them is not the best strategy. Now, that also does not mean you kind of wait for perfection to kick in, but I think you have to err on the side of making a great product that your customers love, that your consumers love. And if that's not happening, nothing else will actually matter. Doesn't matter if you, and there are far, like there are so many examples of, uh, you know, of companies that have created you know, uh, uh, not a great product, got investors to give them capital, achieved that status, but are unable to hold that status. Versus you could take two extra years to, by the way, get there. But once you get there, you, once you achieve that, you know, you know, a status of being a big company, you can actually then grow from there to a very different level. So the reason I say this is don't be in a hurry to get to that place. Be in a hurry to get a great product in place because once your product is in place, you can actually get there. And that would require you to have high quality engineering team, high quality product team, you know, be in touch with your customers, whether it's consumer or enterprise, like just spend a lot of time as, as the founder, as the entrepreneur, as the CEO, you should be spending a lot of time trying to figure that piece out. Until that piece is, is there, do not try and scale, do not try and make yourself bigger than what you are because that that will backfire quite you know quite quickly. The third one is uh, you know it's again I would argue it's quite quite simple but you know there are m many ways of trying to grow and it's partly linked to the previous point by the way not completely but there are many ways to grow and if you really want to figure out how to, how you want to grow. Of course, growth matters, guys. Of course, growth matters. But growth at all cost does not matter. It doesn't mean anything. And, and I know it's a cliche term right now, the unit economics. I know a lot of people are aware of it. But you have to be ruthless about unit economics. You have to know that while you're growing, you have a line of sight of being, you know, achieving your unit economics. Uh, if you, if you do not have a line of sight of being, you know, you, your unit economics being in check and you're just going after growth, it's like a T20 game. You're just going out there and batting and batting and batting. You're just going to get out. And yes, you, you, you know, you'll be exciting because you, you know, you know, you'll be hitting a bunch of sixes and whatnot, but this is not, building a company is not a T20 match. It's a test match, right? And so, everything will count. And therefore, one of the biggest things that at least I, you know, we are aware of internally at, at Inmobi uh, and anyone that I speak with is to say, don't be in a hurry. Get your unit economics in, in you know, get, get control of your unit economics and then grow. Even if you're growing a little slow, doesn't matter. You don't have, you don't like, there is no end time here. There is not, there's nothing like, oh, I must grow very, very fast. I must grow crazily fast because what matters more is that you grow rightly. And therefore, once you have a great control on your unit economics, then you can scale the business very differently. 
very similar to the previous point. Once you have a great control on your product and it works, then you can scale. Similarly, once you have a great control on your unit economics, then you can scale it. And you have to be very, very aware of, beware of, by the way, vanity metrics. Vanity metrics are the worst things to go for. They are important to have them in your in, at the back of your mind, but they cannot like they cannot be the primary things. Uh, so whether it was GMV, number of transactions, DAU, MAU, they are important, but the reality is somewhere else. And so therefore, be very clear on on what you're what you're going for. And I'll come back to this vanity metrics point a little later because it's a very critical you know very critical point uh, in general. The, the next point is also important because, you know, as entrepreneurs, as CEOs, you would get surrounded by, you know, people who, who, are, who are giving you capital. Uh, and it's very hard when media talks about the great amount of capital raise that's happened and whatnot, but the reality is capital raising does not justify success. I think while it's very critical to raise the capital, one should be very clear that raising that capital means you need to essentially have the right amount of business metrics to fall in place for this. And, and you should, at least in your very small core group, be brutally honest to say, are your business metrics, the core business metrics, are they justifying a billion dollar company? And if they are not, then trust me, they're not. You may have done a great sales job to getting the investor in, but that's not going to be, that's not going to be sufficient. It is going to catch up to you very, very soon. And so therefore, I want to make sure that, you know, if you're wanting to build a big company, capital raise does not just, just you know, signify success. And unfortunately, in our in our country right now, a lot of the media coverage is around capital raise because that just you know it's a great third party validation on success, whereas it's not a it's not a it's not a true sign of success. And also at this point, I want to just you know make sure pe people understand that the in investor incentives, by the way, are not aligned with yours. They're not aligned with yours. Now, of course, it said, hey, I own equity, you own equity, and so therefore they're aligned, but that's not true. The reality is the following. If your company is doing really well, then the investor is basically looking at you, the existing investor is basically looking at you saying, hey, how can I get the next fundraise happen? Why? Because that would allow me to essentially look at my, my I will be able to mark up my uh, share price. And if I mark up my share price in my partnership, I am the king. I will be, you know, I will be, you know, celebrated. Now, that's not your incentive because you're, you don't really care about him being happy or unhappy. You care about your company being good. And therefore, in those times when your company is doing well, you will be pushed for vanity metrics. Hey, get more, like, why don't you spend more money and get more transactions done, get spend more money and they'll get more customers. But that is just vanity. That may not be true. And you should be clear whether you really want to whether you really want to like do that or not, and you should be very, very careful in that. So that's when your company is doing well. When your company is not doing well, then also it's an issue because then from the investor point of view, they apply what's called a portfolio strategy and say, hey, the, this one is not doing well. My business is anyway about a very big power law, so I will actually go with somebody else. And so to me, you know, those kind of things kind of change uh, you know, a lot of it. And the last point I'll mention is... And this is never discussed in any of the any of the you know board meetings, any of those places. But it's probably the most important one is that the culture matters, like your people matter. Uh, and unfortunately, because it's never discussed in the board meetings, it is one of those things which always is seen as soft and you know not very important, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if but trust me, I personally. Uh, you know, put probably 80% of our success on culture. Of course, we do great strategy. Of course, we do a phenomenal execution. We raise a lot of capital. We are global and whatnot. But this is what really matters. And as, as CEOs, if, if, if you were to essentially go around and spend time with each other, you would realize you would talk a lot more about these topics. 
versus not. And especially as companies become bigger, this is the only thing that will matter because you will not actually have a, a lot of control on your strategy. You will not have a lot of control on your execution yourself. The only thing you can control is culture. And so therefore, even though it will not be a discussed topic at the board level, make sure that you know it's something that you really own. So those are the few things that I had. Uh, thank you for the time. More than happy to take questions if there are any. But uh, we'll thank you. Thank you. Naveen, Naveen, there's, uh, there's a lot of echo. Thank you, Naveen. It has been uh, absolutely great hearing you. Genuinely great. I have gone through this journey myself. All our council members have gone through this journey. So we really see as if we are watching an Amitabh Bachchan movie sitting in the audience. You know, absolutely great. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, we are not. Uh, we will really like to have you to take a half day workshop one day to really teach us how do we we can uh, follow your path to probably go there. But excellent. Top class. Thank you very much. Being unicorn is not a goal. It's an early milestone. It actually made us feel, uh, uh, you know, wanting for more. You know, then think big, look for a big opportunity carefully. Building products is not a test match. It's a, it's a, it's a test match. It's not a T20. Absolutely fantastic. And lastly, what you said is really great. So today I heard it from very senior leaders in the industry that ultimately it's culture which is driving the organization's success. Fantastic, Naveen. Thank you very much. There are many questions here. I'll Actually, our time has got over, uh, but we need to ask you something very quickly is that when it comes to product development uh, from the audience, the question is how long you think you can wait for the product to grow and survive because market changes will automatically take uh, its own course. So when do you think uh, you will call it a day if there's an old product? I, uh, think, you know, yeah. I, I think what one needs to do is be willing to kill their own product. Very good. Uh, and, and unless until you have the, you, you know, you have the ability to see that you are willing to kill your own product. And the way you try and kill your own product is not by killing, killing it. You create an alternate team within that group of yours and ask them to work on the next generation products. Yeah. While this starts to become a cash cow and who can predict how long the cash cow stays, right? Uh, you have to essentially get the other one in. And we, we at least feel that we have been able to do that many times over the last 13 years. And therefore, while, you know, most of the advertising and marketing companies went away, we have succeeded in scale because we were able to do a lot of that throughout the, throughout the journey. Very well. And there's another pr uh, question, uh, uh, which I'm just repeating what is written here is that what market requirements are there to build a unicorn? Is it delight of the customer or consumer? What is your real experience? So I asked the clarification, the, uh, the audience asked, can you share a real experience like a U Uber story? So uh, uh, so what, uh, what's your response? Yeah, you of course, by the way, the, I think that is the, that's the only thing that will that'll matter. Are your customers loving your product or not, right? And no, so, so the point is that are, I think what the audience is asking for is that do you really go for a space which is vacant or do you want to create a new space? Is it that way or uh, so how do you see the market development? Well, well I think in, in the case of Inmobi, we went for a space that was vacant because it was an understood space at that point of time. Because it was a space that would appear with, with the advent of the e internet ecosystem on mobile platforms. With Glance, we went after a completely new space that had never existed before, which was, you know, taking over the lock screens and converting them into an intelligent surface. Um, and those are two examples that we have taken. One, you know, requires different uh, skill sets. The other requires different level of innovation. Very but in both of the places, unless until your final consumers is loving you, what you're doing, and you've really solved the problem that's there, you don't have a chance. Good. Okay, with that, uh, I will... I would like to say a big thank you to you on behalf of NASCOM and uh, the SME Council of NASCOM and all the audience. We loved hearing you. And uh, please do consider taking a big workshop for us. We'll we can promise you an equally big uh, audience for a workshop. You are a star speaker for us. And when we publish your name, we got immediately very high level, uh, a number of registrations coming in very quickly. So that shows you are an extremely popular leader. But uh, more than that, you're an extremely successful leader and uh, uh, you have caused uh, 
uh, if you you have created a path which lot of us would like to follow thank you very much for coming to nascom and look forward to hearing you again sometime